here's, I'm continuing to work on this Trek 820 mountain bike that I got for free. Uh, it's got uh, RST 191 CS forks on there. Uh, they're relatively low end forks, but they work. They uh, have movement on there. And uh, I figured that they could probably benefit from taking them apart, cleaning them, lubing them, and then putting them back together. And so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'll start off by removing the front wheel here, release the brake and the skewer. And now I want to get the brakes out of the way. I, just, I can either disconnect this cable up here or just remove this one side, but I'm just going to remove them both. Just get them the heck out of the way. Now I can remove these. Now on a lot of shocks, uh, these are like adjuster caps up here, but and they screw on, but on these, they're just like little dummy caps. I can use a little flat tip screwdriver. There's a little slot here and just kind of pry them up like that. And it's just a little pressed on cap there. And there's just really nothing under there, but uh, I'll go ahead and pop them off anyway, just to show you like that. And so there's, there's no stacks in here like on uh, what you'd find like on better shocks. Now at the bottom of each fork leg, there's a small Allen bolt here. It's a four millimeter uh, hex bolt here. And I need to remove these to drop the lowers down. The problem is that if I unscrew these, uh, as soon as I unscrew it and it comes loose, the stuff inside there just starts turning and I can't get these out. So what I need to do is I need to compress the forks so that it kind of tightens up the stuff inside the fork tubes there. And that way I can unscrew the, the uh, bolts there. Now there's some different ways I can uh, compress the forks while I go to unscrew these uh, bolts down there. One, I can have a friend put weight on the handlebars to compress the forks while I get under there and unscrew the screws. Two, uh, I have really long arms so I can just put weight on the forks there and reach down and unscrew them like this. But not everybody has long arms like I do. So, what I'm going to do is, since I'm working alone and I want to make it accessible to everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my weight down on the handlebars here to compress the forks. Then use a bit of rope here to tie around the, uh, the fork bridge here and the top of the fork get compressed and then tie this here and that will hopefully keep the forks compressed enough for me to go under here and unscrew these screws. And it looks like it's gonna work. There's one screw out. And there's the other screw out. So now I can untie my rope here, move that, now with the bolts removed, I should be able to pull the lowers off just like that. And oh, that looks pretty disgusting there. Oh, and there's water in there, ugh. Oh, what a mess. But I can clean these up. And then I think this just unscrews. Yeah, so the spring just kind of screws up into there like that. Okay, so I got these parts all cleaned up. I just used degreaser and then hot water and dish soap and some scrub brushes and rags. Uh, to get down inside of the uh, lowers here, I used a piece of coat hanger with a rag on the end, kind of pushed it down, kind of scrubbed on the inside there, also up in here as well. Uh, I, there was a little bit of rust spots on here, so I used a little bit of just chrome polish and helped kind of clean these up, and so those are looking pretty nice. And so I'm ready to put this all back together again. For lubrication, I'm going to use some stuff called Slick Oleum. It also goes under the name of Slick Honey. And this stuff is great for uh, forks and shocks like this. Uh, it's like safe for plastics. And so I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just rub it down onto the springs all the way up and down here. Just get like a coating of it on here. And after I get a nice good coating of grease on here, this, the top of the spring here, if I put this up in here, it actually screws up into a part inside there. And so I just kind of, kind of turn this uh, uh, clockwise and it will screw into there. 
and then put a little bit of grease onto this one as well and screw this up into here like this and I pulled out a little piece of plastic that was kind of wrapped around on the inside here it was only on the one side uh, so I don't know if there was like one on the other it's like plastic or paper so I'm not quite sure I'm kind of guessing to keep the spring from rattling around on the inside there so I'm not quite sure it was only on the one side or not the other and so I'm just going to put like a little bit of grease onto here because it had a lot of grease on there and just roll this up and slide this up into the tube to kind of like where it was up into here like this what the heck next I want to get like a little bit of uh, grease down inside the, the little parts that these slide on there so I'll, I'll just put a, a grease on my finger there and just kind of rub it around on the inside there and on the other side as well and then I can put like a little bit of grease down on the, these parts here and then there's these little seals up there so I'm just going to put like a little bit of a grease onto the inside of these here as well both of these like that and now I can slide these up into place like this kind of work them on like that now I'm ready to put these bolts back in the bottom here and what I need to do is there's a the little part that sticks down I need to kind of like line it up so that the hole in the bottom of that part there lines up the whole hole in the bottom of the shock there so I'm using like a, an awl here and I'll kind of just kind of move the part up so that I can see the hole there and then slide the screw into the hole there and kind of get it started a bit and then get this one kind of lined up there kind of move it around till I can find the hole there and get the screw in there and get it started then I can use my driver to screw this in and fortunately screwing this in will be easier than trying to get it out because this would actually be tightening the spring into the upper part there and so I don't have to worry about it turning so I just turn it till it's tight and same with this one turn it till it's tight and make sure both of them are nice and solid in there that they're not going to come unscrewed there like that and then I'm just going to pop these little caps back in here I really didn't need to take them out because there was nothing I needed to do inside there but I just took them out to kind of show you what was in there and so now I'm going to reattach the brakes put a little bit of grease on there Reinstall the front wheel here. Reattach the brake here. And done. And they're moving nice and smoothly. I mean, they moved okay before, but they're much smoother now. And all I do is like clean them and lube them. And yeah, they're not high end forks, but uh, they look much nicer. They're going to last a long time and work for the next rider. Um, and all I do is clean them and lube them. What do you think? Anyway, I hope you found that useful or interesting. If you did, please give my video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the little logo over in the corner. You see new videos that come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page, and I post a ton of stuff over there. And I have a webpage, rjthebikeguy.com. Go over there, sign up for that page, and I have a lot of stuff over there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.